Hi friends, Shayla here. So I am here to wrap up what I've read in the last little while. It's been a little bit since I've wrapped up what I've read. I think it's been since the 8th technically. So let's go ahead and talk about the things that I've read and then I will do one last wrap up for the last week of the month. So I am going to caveat this with the fact that I participated in the Stay Home Reading Rush this round and so I will leave those vlogs linked for you in the cards throughout this video because I'm not going to talk about anything I read during that because there are wrap-ups at each of the end of the vlogs of what I read in that particular vlog. So you can definitely figure out my detailed thoughts on anything I read during those between the two vlogs. So I'm just going to leave that there <laughs> because I hate to be super repetitive on the channel. So these are things that I haven't really talked about on the channel. I have a little bit but we're going to blitz through the things that I've already talked about and I will reference those in the cards as well. So anything that you want to know my thoughts on that I don't talk about in depth in this video will be linked in the cards because I already have on the channel. So let's start with the mangas and then we'll get into the book a day stuff. So the first thing I've got here is volume nine of Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts. Y'all know I love this series so much. This volume was so good and it just really let our characters shine. We're seeing a lot of growth. We're seeing a lot of growth within the country that they live, but we're also seeing people who want to stay in the old ways. It's just so good. It's so political. It's, ugh, it just gives me life so very much. It seriously just warms my heart. I need more people to read this. The amount of people reading this is so low. I honestly, I hold this like about the same level as Yona because it isn't so romance centric as some fantasy shoujo are, but romance is kind of in the background, but primarily this is about the politics of an outsider becoming a leader. And it's so well done, so well handled. It's just, ugh, chef's kiss. It is so good. Like y'all just need to go and try it, please. Pretty please. Next on the stack here, we have My Dress Up Darling Volume 1. I talk about this extensively in a dedicated video, so I will leave that linked for you. But all in all, I did enjoy this, but I do have some things that kind of have me on the fence about it. So I am going to pick up Volume 2 and decide from there. But if you want details on what this is about, then I definitely recommend checking out that video. And yes, this is a cutesy cover, but it's got a dark and smexy side to it. Next on the list, we have Perfect World by I Aruga. This is volume one. It's finally coming out physically. I have read this through volume nine, so technically this was a reread. So I will talk about it more extensively in my reread roundup that's coming up soon. But no, I still love it. It is still fantastic. The representation is still so good. So I highly recommend people check this one out. And then there was Bunny Drop. I have a whole reaction video to this entire series. I read the full 10 volume series and I'm just gonna leave my salty face here and let you guys go and check out that reaction vlog to get my full thoughts. The end ruined the entire series for me. I'm still salty, I'm still bitter. Yes, that is Bunny Drop. And then the last physical manga thing I have here is the first omnibus of Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind from the Studio Ghibli, Ghibli Library put out by Viz. This big hardback is beautiful and it's not super dark. It's kind of more on that brown, almost sketch kind of color. This is by Hayao Miyazaki, who is the person who also did the Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind film. With that said, the manga and the film are very different. So I will be doing a film to manga comparison once I complete the series, which should be this week. So just know that that is coming and I have a lot and a lot and a lot of thoughts. All right, I did get a couple more volumes of manga for review through NetGalley, thanks to my friends at Viz. So the first one we're gonna talk about is Act Age Volume 1. So in this we're following a teenage girl who has this very strong desire to be an actor and she's very much a method actor. She becomes completely the person that she's portraying and there's a director that sees the brilliance in that and then there's an agent that sees the danger in that and so it's about this director kind of taking her under his wing for a pet project that he has. 
I do think this isn't necessarily going to be the fluffiest of series to read by any means. It already kind of has a little bit of a dark and sinister undertone to it. I thoroughly enjoyed it though. So I do plan on continuing the series. I cannot remember when this one is supposed to release, so I will leave the date here for you guys. But yes, very much put Act Age on your list because it is worth the pickup. And then the other digital manga volume that I've gotten to, I have a couple others that I'll be reading soon, but the other one that I've gotten to so far is Love Me, Love Me Not Volume 2. Now, y'all know that there was a somewhat problematic trope at the end of Volume 1. With the way everything's handled in Volume 2, I think it's safe for everybody. Like, I really liked how it was handled. Seriously, Volume 2 was solid. Ayo Saki Saka really is starting to creep up there as a favorite mangaka for me. I'm really just thoroughly enjoying Love Me, Love Me Not so far. So, Volume 2 is super good. Highly recommend. Definitely do it. Alrighty, that is it for the manga, so let's go ahead and dive into the other things that I've read. So on day nine of April, I read Eat and Love Yourself by Sweeney Boo. Now this is a graphic novel featuring a plus-size woman who isn't really in love with her body. I think she's beautiful. The art depicts her very beautifully, in my opinion. But I do think that this is going to be a heavy topic. This is about... The fact that she doesn't love her body and she is at her normal convenience store and there was a new chocolate bar there. But this chocolate bar seems to send her back in time to different memories and specific points within her life to remind her how to love herself, essentially, is how the graphic novel plays out. It is so well done. She does have friends who call her on bad behavior, which I love that that's there and that's present. But all in all, it's kind of a tough and gritty read. I gave it four stars. I definitely appreciate what's being done here. Um, I don't think everybody's going to love this by any means, but I do think it's well done if you are interested in something like that. I definitely recommend checking that one out. On day 10, I finished Nobody But You by Jill Shalvis. This is a romance in which we're following the, the Kincaid family. In this one, we follow Jacob. Jacob is the brother who, the twin who kind of ran away. And so he's come back to town to kind of face his family and face the fallout. And he finds this woman down on her luck, um, basically got left nothing in her divorce from her crappy, crappy husband, and is marooned on the place where he was renting. And so they kind of get to know each other because of that. And it blossoms into a beautiful relationship. And things were very well handled in here. Solid four stars. Love my Jill Chavez stuff. Like, I don't think I've ever given anything Jill Chavez less than four stars. Like, I just thoroughly enjoy her writing. And they're really well done. They're solid. I love them. Definitely recommend checking out anything to do with the Kincaid family because these books are really well done. I just love them. On the 11th day of April, I finished Not That Kind of Guy by Andy J. Christopher. Now, I did not enjoy the first book. I DNF'd it in this series. Now, book two, I really enjoyed. This is like an office romance in which we have a female lawyer who's a little older, but very like good at what she does and her intern, essentially. But they don't start a relationship until the internship ends. Like, there's flirting, but they don't actually go on a date until after that. So that power dynamic isn't present. And it basically ends up being this fake married, or at least fake engaged kind of situation. Like, it's so good. No, they're fake married. I'm remembering right. They're fake married. And it was so good. It was just a really fun time. Solid four stars. They, it's one of those, they got drunk married in Vegas kind of things. And it's just so good. Like I highly recommend it. It's, it's a ride, but it was fun. On April 12th, I finished How to Love Your Elf. This is b technically book four in the, <laughs> in the Embraced by Magic series. But I guess this is like a second trilogy. So it's also a book one. And I didn't know that. So I definitely plan on going back and rereading the previous trilogy. And I would recommend you start with the previous trilogy. Because you're just kind of dumped in the world. And you don't really know what's going on. So it took me a minute to catch up. But still, I gave this a solid four. I do wish it was a little more smutty. But the smut you get is fantastic. I'm definitely going to go revisit the other books. This is basically a 
it's got like a Robin Hood kind of trope hidden within it, as well as a, you know, damsel in distress, rescued by the Robin Hood kind of situation. Like Robin Hood made Marion feels like it's so good. And then there's elves and all sorts of other creatures like within the series. So it's really good. It's really fun. I do recommend checking out the series, but I'm going to go back and revisit the previous trilogy to make sure that I fully understand everything. On the 13th, I finished Ruthless Bastard by Stacey Kennedy. This is another solid four star romance. I've kind of been at three or four stars with all of these particular books from Stacey Kennedy. I think this is the third in this series. There is an accidental pregnancy trope present, so I probably would have given it a higher star rating had that not been present, but she's pregnant like from the beginning kind of a situation rather than like at the end. So I deal with it a little better when it's like thrown at you first thing. But anyways, this is like longtime childhood friends turned to lovers. They hook up one night. She doesn't expect anything more than the one night because of his personality and she ends up pregnant. She wasn't gonna tell him, but she tells him, and yes, all of the ramifications of that. It was still really well handled and really well done. I really enjoyed it. All right, on the 14th, I finished The Silver Yarn by Kor Yamazaki. This is a collection of short stories from The Ancient Magus Bride. This is technically the second collection. I do recommend reading the first collection before the second collection because there is a part two of one of the stories in this collection. How many times am I gonna say collection in this description? <laughs> this is really good. So all, overall, I gave it a 3.5 stars. I always do short story compilations. Like I take the star rating on each story and then I average them out. So I rounded up the average a little bit because overall this was good. There were a few real stinkers in here, but other than that, I did really well with this collection and it was really well done and I enjoyed it. And then on the 15th, I finished an audiobook, and that is Cursed by S.J. West. That Redemption series that I read previously from S.J. West, this is like a prequel trilogy to that series. And I'm not sure if it was written before the other or if she decided to revisit the world after. Either way, I love this world. I plan on deep diving this world. You'll see another book from this trilogy in this <laughs> wrap up. But Cursed is book one. So we're following two characters that we previously, like that I knew about in the other series. And I'm not going to spoil the coupling on that, but this is Lily's trilogy and it's so well handled, so well done. I really love it. Solid four. I'm going to be deep diving SJ West for a while. So expect to see a lot more SJ West on this channel. All right. And then the 16th through the 19th is where you will find the things that I read during the, during the stay home reading rush. So make sure you check out those vlogs, making sure I'm not missing anything. <laughs> well, the next thing we have to talk about is Blessed by SJ West. I finished that after the stay home reading rush. I was listening to it a little bit throughout the stay home reading rush. And then I completed it on the 19th. Uh, on the 20th and it was really good. I'm really looking forward to book three. I've been consuming them on audiobook and the first two are available through Audible Escape, but book three is not, so I'm a little sad. So I'm waiting for my Audible credit to come in so I can listen to it because I really enjoy these audiobooks. They're really well narrated and I just like the series in general. And then on the 21st, I read At Night I Become a Monster. This is a light novel by Yoru Sumino is what I want to say, but essentially this deals a lot with bullying. So we have Adachi and at night he transforms into this nightmarish kind of creature with like insect kind of legs and a carapace and lots of eyes and things. And every morning he reverts back to his human self and goes to school and one of his classmates he ends up running into while he's in his creature kind of form. And this particular classmate is actually his classmate that is bullied by the entire class. And so it's about him getting to know this classmate and the ramifications of him getting to know her just in his psyche and things. And it's just so well handled. It kind of shows all sides of bullying. It shows the bulliers, it shows the bullied and the people on the sidelines. Like it's really good about showing those three different perspectives on bullying and it's just really so well done so beautifully depicted everything made sense it was crystal clear I highly recommend checking this out I think it's a very important work and I'm so glad it got translated into English and that we have a physical publish of this because I really want more people to try this out it is really well done it definitely 
is like a bullying version of A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. It has that same kind of emotional impact to me. So I highly recommend checking this out. Not only is this cover stunning, the story inside really is well handled. I just really enjoyed this. It was really just... I, I'm going to keep saying the same things, so I'm going to put this down, but no, you should all go pick it up and read it because I gave it five stars. On the 22nd, I finished My Kind of Cowboy by R.C. Ryan. This will be out this upcoming Tuesday. I'm so excited for you guys to get a chance to read this. This is a brand new series by R.C. Ryan. It takes place in Wyoming. It's got cowboys, and we have that opposites attract trope because we've got a city girl who's come to do physical therapy for this cowboy who's limping, and they're meddling family. And there's a beautiful female friendship that blooms within this story. And I really love it with all my heart. And I love that it's there. And the romance is really sweet on top of that as well. Like everything's just really well handled. And the, <laughs> it's funny because the second novel in here is kind of an opposites attract as well from one of my other favorite series published by Forever and it's called Cowboy Rebel by Carolyn Brown. So you'll get a two for one when you buy the physical mass market floppy paperback. So it's worth the money, I promise, because <laughs> you get two really good books for $8.99 if you pay full price. So, you know, you're paying less than $5 a book, so it's worth it. And both are really solid and really good. I ended up giving this a solid four. Really enjoyed it. Definitely looking forward to more in the series because there are brothers, so I know we're getting more books. And then last but not least for this wrap up, I have I Am Sleepless Sim 299 by Johan Twist. This is a local author to me and this was an indie pubbed book. I wanted to give it a try. I found it at my local used bookstore. Um, they were selling them for the author and I wanted to give it a try and I got about halfway through and I couldn't go any further. It felt like a ripoff of Ender's Game to me. It just, it hit wrong. It was kind of weird. It was clunky and I just did not enjoy it. And I'm really sad because I really wanted to. I love to support local to me authors when I can and this one just did not, it didn't go. <laughs> and I paid full price for it. <laughs> well, at least what they had it full price for at the used bookstore. I'm assuming that's what they were charging for it anyway. But yeah, so this was a DNF at about the halfway point. It was not so good and I'm really kind of sad about it. So friends, that gets you current through the 23rd of April. You will get everything from the 24th to the 30th in another wrap up coming soon. And if you have thoughts on anything I've read, let me know in the comments down below. Also make sure you check the card symbol for anything that I have not talked about in this video. It will all be linked there. So you will have links to all the videos that you need in the card symbol. Anyways, thank you guys so much. Welcome if you're new. We've had a lot of growth here on the channel and I genuinely appreciate each and every one of you. And if you're new, I would love it if you would subscribe and click the little bell so you know when I post new videos. This is YouTube and you guys know what to do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.